Hey everybody, welcome to our monthly webinar where we're going to talk about how you learn best. Uh, joining me today is Kim Coffey. We do ask that you tell us where you're viewing from, like us, share us so that we can reach other FMs like yourselves to help get the word out about training and upskilling and everything that we can help you with to be a better FM. So if Ma's vision and mission really go into our professional training, as well as just the different ways that you're going to learn that we'll cover today in, in our webinar, first of all, the vision is to lead the future of the built environment to make the world a better place. And I know that that sounds like a heavy reach, but if you think about the impact facilities have, if we're able to really improve the efficiency of facilities, the way they're run, the way they interact with our, our, with our world and our environment, it really will make the world a better place. And our mission supports that. So we advance that collective knowledge, the value and growth for our FM professionals to perform at their highest level. If has been here for 40 years helping to define what is facility management? How do we impact it? We're in over 100 countries with, that number is actually a little bit low, over 23,000 members globally and almost 140 chapters. So this is how we um, look when we uh, look at developing our professional development and content. All of this is kept in mind. So as we are talking about advancing FM, making the world a better place, what are some of those top challenges facing FMs in 2023? By the way, this is not something that Gail and I pulled together. This is insight from our annual survey. And you can see education and development is absolutely part of that. Of course, when the survey went out and even currently returning to work, is a hybrid workforce something that's sustainable? How do we support that? More than half of our FMs who responded find that as a top challenge. A labor shortage, that is incredibly important and you need to have skilled labor. How do you get that? Budget and costs, how are you going to be able to manage everything in the facility as well as operating and maintaining it? Um, recruitment and retention, education and development. All of those things can feed into one another. So, Gail, as we take a look at these, I'm looking at labor shortage, recruitment and retention, education, right, budget and costs, and then all of that goes to support that, that number one return to work or hybrid. Is this something that you hear? I know you talk to a lot of FMs as they're considering the training they need. I actually spoke with somebody last week who mentioned the return to work. They don't have as many tenants in their building any longer because they find that it's easier because they can do the work from home now because, you know, we were forced to do a different type of working yes. um, in 2020. And so they have stuck with that. So having to make those adjustments for returning to work have been very challenging, especially for this company that I spoke with last week. So, yes, we are definitely hearing about all of these pain points so far this year. Excellent. For those of you that are joining in, if you'd like to maybe share with us if, if this resonates with you, do you have a different challenge that maybe wasn't reflected in our survey, feel free to add that into the comments. We'd love to understand what are you facing as we continue talking about professional development and the ways that people like to learn. So why choose IFMA training? And again, this is not Kim and I saying, okay, this is what we should talk about. This is what we should update. That's not it at all. Uh, we actually listen to our experts and you as the FMs who are doing the work. We have a global panel that come together and really create the content to help us propel the facility management profession. Um, we are, IFMA is ANSI and ANAB accredited. And what does that mean? That means that we have a third party come in and review all of the content that we have listed for our credentials. And it confirms that what you're tested on in your final assessments is what you are learning in the material itself. Um, yes, we have been around for over 40 years, but that doesn't mean our content is old or 40 years old. We actually do this, how often do we do this, Kim, this review? 
So typically it was every three to five years, but we're moving into a new model. Like it says in here, cutting technology and methodology. We are finding ways to be able to have Instead of three to five years when we come out, you know, is there new competency? What's changed? We're looking at a comp at a dynamic way of getting this information so that we're able to provide updated content um, that's a little bit more, um, I don't want to say updated because it things don't change in six months. We have different things that start to change, but a true change, it takes a little bit longer. But this is going to keep our finger on the pulse of facility management, what you're, you're actually doing, what are your job roles, job tasks, how does that change, and then how can we create the content to help you be prepared to meet those changes and those challenges as well. And this is something that, again, IFMA training really does fit your needs when you need them and where you need them. And as we move forward and we talk about the different learning styles, we're also going to talk about the flexibility of our training. One size does not fit all. And some people may need help across all 11 competencies that we'll be talking about here in a moment. Or it may be, you may be very experienced and just need a little bit of a deeper dive into something that you haven't been exposed to very frequently in the building that you are supporting because we all have different challenges and there's different sized buildings and some have lease, uh, people leasing it, others don't, uh, they may own that building. So every FM has a different experience and may need a different type of training. So on the next slide, what we'll see here is finding your path, like we were just talking about. Everybody has a different experience. And where you enter in to the facility management world, where you are currently, how long you've been in it, what, are, what is your, your collective experience, will help you determine where do you go in to find your training. By the way, uh, and I hope that this stacked training kind of gives you an idea, it is not a one and done. Don't think, oh, I'm going to earn a credential and then I don't need to worry about learning anymore. There is always a lifelong journey in your learning. Um, so let's take a look at your pathfinding. If you're fairly new, Essentials is that entry point down here towards the bottom. That is more at that beginner level, usually less than a year of experience in a facility. Um, moving on up into the FMP, this is more of that skilled level. This provides you that strong foundation. There's four of those 11 competencies um, that we'll cover here in a moment that the FMP represents. And then speaking of the competencies, the other seven are represented here, bringing you to more proficient level. And then SFP is our sustainability credential. And that is a very much of a deep dive into not just the theory and concepts of sustainability in your facility or built environment, but also the application of those, those um, concepts in a real world sense that helps you really be able to run a 70 year old building or a seven year old building more sustainably. And then at the very top at that master level is the CFM, which is an actual certificate, requires you to recertify every three years. But this just gives you an overview of the fact that Everybody comes in at a different um, and, and will be at a different level in their career. And we just want you to know that IFMA is here with the level of training that you need to get you to that next level. So let's delve into how you prefer to learn. So we do have three options. Um, first is going to be online self-paced. The second option would be virtual instructor-led classes. And then that third option, which is finally coming back, and I'm so excited, um, is in-person classroom learning. So each of these, so online, once you've logged in and signed up for your training, you will have the online aspect. And then we're going to delve into the other two a little bit more on the upcoming slides. Mm -hmm. Before we get to the other two, here is the online self-paced learning. It's available 24-7 at your own pace as your schedule allows. This is the, um, the way that you access all of our courses. 
regardless of uh, if it's a standalone course or we have on-demand videos that are a little bit more nugget-sized pieces of information. With the 11 competency courses, though, you will receive a digital flipbook, a downloadable PDF, so you could read the digital book on any one of your mobile devices, flip cards and glossary of terms that can be printed out because sometimes that's going to be a preferred way of getting everything locked in to uh, your mind and, and your memory. Then the final assessment. Uh, Gail and I get asked a lot, how do I access the final assessment? Well, it's going to be in the course that you access. So it will be there when you're ready to go in and test that knowledge. There are optional print books that you can add in some people. And I have to admit, I am one of them. I, I like, <laughs> I like a printed book, but it, it's all about um, kind of being a little bit more sustainable as well. Accessing the course material again, from anywhere you're at. So you don't have to lug a book around. You can access it when it's convenient for you to read the material or to go back over the material. So yes. that is, this is what, Every course comes with, and now let's take a look at those optional ways. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Gail, what are those? Tell yeah. us about these. So these are the 11 competencies that Kim mentioned in the pathfinding. So the CFM is going to cover all 11 of these, but if you're not going for your CFM, that's okay too. If you're looking just to gap fill, maybe you don't deal with real estate every day and your your current job is asking you to take on a few more responsibilities that deal with real estate. Taking the standalone course is a great way to get your feet wet, provide a little bit more confidence in understanding what this real estate is. What does mm -hmm. this mean? Um, it'll give you that opportunity to just fill in those little gaps so that you do have a better understanding when you are questioned or if you're expected to explain anything. So you'll see that the first four across the top do create the FMP credential, which is separate from anything else that we're dealing with on this screen. So all the other, sorry, all the others yeah. can be bundled together or they can be taken individually and the same goes for the FMP. If you're not ready to get a credential, that's okay too. Maybe you just wanna learn about leadership and strategy. Log mm -hmm. in, get that information, get that under your belt. If you come back later and say, you know what, maybe I do want this credential, it's there. If you never come back and say that and you move on, that's okay too. But we wanted to give you a better visual of what those 11 competencies are, just that you have a better understanding of what we're offering. Again, all of these reflect what our actual, what actual FMs are doing, the practicing FMs do that make up the, the totality of their work. Some will be represented more than others, like operations and maintenance. But I love the example that Gail provided leadership and strategy. And that's actually what was on my mind. If as a facility manager, or even a, as part of your organization, if you are needing to really influence people to um, understand why there's capital planning that needs to happen and, and maybe some capital expenses that you need to plan for, what you see coming up so that everybody, nobody is surprised, right, when there's a really expensive piece of equipment that needs to be replaced. Leadership and strategy talks about that. It's not necessarily just the soft skills of how do you become a better leader. This applies leadership and strategy to FMs for facilities. And it's it's really helpful. Same thing with project management. If you are being tasked with completing projects and you want to make sure that you're not missing anything or anything's going to fall through, this is a great course to take when you need it. And that's, that's why I just wanted to emphasize, if you find yourself being challenged, and I'll go back to what is your top challenge right now, we may have a course that will give you some tools to use, some suggestions, some approaches that will help you to be successful in your role right now. Yes. Thanks. Th Daniela, yes, perfect. This is the next slide. So when we start talking about all of these courses, and I'm sure you're thinking, okay, how long will it take me to get through this material? What's my time commitment? These are average completion times. So it is online self-paced. 
I will say that if you look at at the first block here, the seven non FMP core competency courses like real estate that Gail had mentioned earlier, and you're like, oh, okay, four to eight hours per competency, I can knock that out in a day. I caution you because it's meant to be learned. And so it's not a book that you're reading. It really is. You may need to read a chapter or two and process that information and comprehend it and reread it before you're ready to move on. And then, of course, before you're ready to take that final assessment. So there may be some study time. It is built into that. So on average, that's the length of time that we see individuals. But <clears throat> don't plan on rushing through this because you will shortchange yourself. Great knowledge in there. Let's make sure that you get as much out of that material as there is to to get. Um, the FMP, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Daniela, can we pop back? The FMP, because those are the foundational competency areas, meaning this is going to be what you spend the bulk of your day doing, that's going to be more than those other seven that I just mentioned. So this you would plan on 13 to 15 hours per competency. Um, so project management is going to take 13 to 15 hours operations and maintenance. Um, just make sure that you schedule this consistently and take the time that you need to make the most out of this training that you have just committed to if you decide to move forward in that direction. Next slide. And then you'll see the breakdown for essentials and the SFP. So the essentials does have 10 modules to complete. And here you'll see two to four hours per module. Um, and that's a really great breakdown of that um, program. And then the SFP is three to seven hours per chapter with final assessments at the end. So of each chapter. SFP, of each chapter, yes. Um, the SFP is very similar to the FMP as far as content. There is a lot of content to get through. And as Kim mentioned earlier, you want to be able to, when you're studying the FMP, the um, SFP, put yourself in how you're going to use the information. And that way, whenever you are reading through it, you're not rushing through it. These mm -hmm. don't just sleep through your sleep reading and then you're good to go to take the final assessments. I mean, if that's what you want to do to earn it, that's on you, but that's not the purpose of it, right? The purpose is to use the concepts that are covered in each chapter of each program so that you can be that better FM to apply it to your day-to-day -day and be that maybe go-to expert for your company in whatever program or credential that you earn. So before we go to the next slide, one thing I, I would like to to make a comment on, and Gail, you made me think of this. We are sometimes asked, can't I just find out what the questions are? And so I, I just want to know what are the questions so I know the answer. And, you know, if I go into a, a, a classroom, will, will the instructor tell me what those questions are so I can, you know, get it and move on? If you've got that approach, I'm sorry, it's, that's not the intention of this. There's, a lot of, of care and, and time in developing the material that's in here. So it's not meant to be speed read through to just give me the highlights. I just want to be able to answer those final assessments and get that SFP or that FMP. Uh, again, you really will shortchange yourself. Absorb the, absorb the material, move through the material in a way or a learning fashion that will help you be able to comprehend it. But please don't take this with the expectation of, I just want those three letters after my name, or I want to show that I took this course because it's, it's meant to help you really advance your career, grow your knowledge. And as anything, what you put into it is going to be what you get from it. So please don't shortchange yourself. And hey, if it ends up taking you longer than what we're showing here for you to go through it and learn the material, that's okay. Because remember, we've got some people that are really trying to get through this as quickly as possible. And this is an average. Mm -hmm. um, do what's right for you and choose the method of learning that is right for you. Next slide. Oh, so, perfect. Yes. Um, so the virtual instructor-led classes, these are live 90-minute sessions. They are not recorded. 
the whole purpose of this being live is that we want you to, next bullet point, do your homework, right? So the homework is to read the chapter prior to the chapter discussion. And this way, when you're in your live session, you are interacting with the instructor and you're interacting with the other participants in your class. Um, sometimes if there's a question in chapter two of project management module that you, I'm just struggling to get this content understood. Write that question down. When you're in your class, bring it up. It might be a student who says, well, this is how I use it in my day to day. And then mm -hmm. you get to say, oh my gosh, aha. Huh, I never would have put it that way, right? Exactly. And our instructors will even say that, that, and I agree, one person can't know everything. And so you will find that you learn as much from your fellow students. Well, maybe not as much because our instructors are pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but you will learn from your other, from your fellow colleagues who are in that virtual class with you as they may learn from you because we all have different experiences different levels of expertise and you may have something that for you just is a no-brainer that somebody else is really struggling with but the key for these virtual instructor-led courses or classes is that it moves you through the material so that if you are a procrastinator you find that you're not putting yourself first you're not sticking to a schedule this will help you stick to a schedule that homework will make sure that you read chapter one before your 90 minute webinar. And uh, I think Gail said this, but just I want to emphasize it. In the virtual instructor led classes, the instructor will not cover everything that's in that chapter. There's no way you can do that in 90 minutes. They're covering the concepts, the main concepts, and answering questions where you might get stuck. They're able to provide real world examples. So mm -hmm. if you don't do your homework, you may not realize that you don't understand a section of the chapter that they're not going to go in depth on. They're just going to do a high level overview, see if there's any problems understanding it. And then the next class, they've moved on to the next chapter. So absolutely do your homework. And then Gail, we have here the SFP Learning Labs. You want to tell them how that's a little bit different from the FMP virtual? Yes, it is a little bit different. So they are broken down by units. So there's a couple of chapters, and I don't remember which chapters are broken into which units, um, but there are three units that we have put together for application and what makes sense in what you're learning per that section or group of chapters. We have breakout sessions in this particular learning lab. Um, there's something else. Hold on. <laughs> well, I would say that for... The FMP virtual instructor-led classes, the instructor, it's a little bit more receptive. Some instructors, you know, there's going to be some engagement. They may poll, ask polling questions. But, but for the most part, the instructor is giving you that high-level overview. In the SFP, there's a little bit of that. But you're going to be breaking into those groups that Gail had mentioned because they are learning labs. That's, that's why it's got a different name. And you're going to be working on those um, different scenarios that are presented at the end of the chapter and discussing what's the best way to apply what you just read in a real world example. And then you come back together with the instructor and everybody talks about the way that they approached it. And it really becomes collaborative because again, your facility, when you, um, when you're, when you go back to work outside of the, curriculum and the course material is very unique. And IFMA is not going to teach you what to think. Like, here's a list of, of things. Once you've checked it off, this is going to be your action. Instead, we give you the strategy and the thinking tools. So how do you think? How do you approach it? And that way, regardless of the situation, regardless of the facility, and the function of the facility, if you're in a hospital or if you're at an airport, you're going to be able to apply that strategy and come up with a solution that's a best fit for that particular moment in time in that particular facility. So as Gail said, the breakout sessions, all of that, you're going to be learning from one another, but this is going to help you take what you're doing in these learning labs and apply that to your real world and really start making a difference in your facility. 
Yes. <laughs> Next, we have our in-person learning classes. So these differ from the virtual classes because this covers, okay, so virtual classes are only 90 minutes to where in-person classes can be longer because you're not expected to sit in front of a screen for more than, you know, a couple of hours. Um, so the in-person classes also help foster that collectiveness because you are sitting next to the person and can have those I guess your own breakout sessions and conversations mm -hmm. and you'll be able to cover a little bit more in depth into each module versus where the virtual led is just like Kim said, that overview. We do have different opportunities to have in-person training. We can do it through our IFMA chapters. So if you are interested, hit up your chapter, see if they've got anything going on. If they don't, put that bug out there so that we can get some training going. Um, we might even be able to do some cross-chapter situations. Mm -hmm. Just let us know. Um, we do have training affiliates sprinkled throughout the globe. If you are somewhere where you think there might not be an opportunity to do outside of online self-paced, hit us up at corporateconnections at ifma.org. We will help you find that training affiliate that is closest to you to help you make this option work if this is the option that you were interested in. Uh, you can also go through IFMA events. So World Workplace, I think this past World Workplace, we offered, I think, everything. So if that is, yeah, if, that, if that's an option for you, check out Facility Fusion, check out World Workplace, see what is being offered, sign up. And that is actually a, two great places to get training because you will have so many other credentialed FMs around you to ask mm -hmm. questions, to have those great network networking conversations. Um, and then we are contracted with some colleges and universities who, again, also offer our training, our credentials. Exactly. And um, when we, here in a moment, we're going to show you how to access our online course catalog. And there's a place where you can look to see if there's training anywhere near you and what those classes are, the dates that they're scheduled, links to um, to the registration page so that you can add those. Uh, these in-person classes are going to be managed through these particular entities. So IFMA Global or IFMA HQ, however you want to think about IFMA staff, we, we have the virtual classes for the FMP and the SFP, but the in-person is going to be through these various um, options, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind. But as Gail said, you have a full training support team here at IFMA that wants to help you find that right pathway. What is the training needs? And we can help you get into that. So Daniela, the next slide, if you don't mind. Ah, I actually, I, Gail and I both love this, this slide. So we've covered a number of slides and this one slide pulls it all together. So this gentleman in the thought bubble, he is working on his FMP. And the first square right above his, his arms is going to be completing this online through the self-paced FMP courses on his schedule, meaning whenever it's convenient for him. But he could also take optional virtual instructor-led classes that are held once a week the, the virtual classes that we have, it's the same day each week at the same time. So one may be at Tuesday, 11 a.m. Central, and you can put that on your calendar. There's one per chapter. So within four to six weeks, you're going to be done with one of the modules in that FMP. Another option, of course, is he can do an in-person FMP course from any one of those different options. The course catalog will be able to show you where those classes are, the dates, and are they close enough to you so that you can take advantage of it. On the next slide. Dun, 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 we talk about the CFM. So it reviews, like we had mentioned before, the 11 core competencies, and it looks like she is review, reviewing all of this on her own schedule. And if she's ready to go ahead and sit for the exam, she's submitted her application, she's been approved, she meets all of the eligibility requirements, she is good to go to schedule her um, exam at her closest Prometric Testing Center. However, if she is not confident and ready to sit for the exam, we do have 
preparation resources available. Um, none of them are mandatory. If you feel that you might want to fill any gaps of knowledge, we would uh, request that you look at the core competencies to help with that. We also have a prep workshop, which is in person or it can be virtually led. And in the CFM prep workshop, it's going to cover the methodology of how the questions are written, how the answers are written. And then the instructor typically will give you some tips and tricks on sitting for the exam. It does not cover content. If you are looking for content, then the CFM knowledge workshop is going to be where you'd want to start. It will cover what the prep workshop covers, again, the, met that, the methodology of the questions and answers. They'll also give you tips and tricks, and then they will also cover the content. So whenever seven, you, seven of oh, the yes, seven, competencies, right? The FMP, correct. exactly. Because with the not with the experience that you have, you have to meet certain eligibility requirements to qualify or to sit for the CFM exam. If you do, just apply, take the exam, pass, get your CFM. But as Gail said, if you'd like that little bit of reassurance, kind of go back over the content, the seven. Um, other competency areas are covered, not the four that represent the FMP. If you would like to go through that material, we encourage you first take your FMP, get that lifelong credential, have that, that designation, and then look at um, achieving your CFM. All kinds of pathways, all different entry points, and we're here to help you figure out which way would you like to proceed with um, yes. getting your training. So speaking of getting your training and identifying your training, what's a quick way that you can kind of figure out, okay, where do I enter into this, Kim? Well, it's the career compass. It's quick and easy way to determine where to start your journey. There is a shortened URL code there. It's a two-minute survey that will help you put in your experience and your education and kind of what's your objectives? What are you wanting to do? And it will point you towards the ideal IFMA learning. Now, two-minute survey. Again, I've mentioned before, you get what you put into it. This is to help you begin your journey. If you want a deeper dive into where you need to start, then that may be the self-assessment tool. And we can send you information on that. But that uh, takes... Uh, quite a bit of time. It covers all 11 competencies. I believe it's over 300 questions. Is that right, Gail? It is. Okay. So we we don't want to completely overwhelm you. Um, a lot of where your experience is is going to help us help you determine where your start point is. But this is a good one. This is a good, mm -hmm. quick, okay, where do I go from here? And then next let's find that training. So when you log in, you'll go to fm.training. There's nothing before, there's nothing after. It is literally just fm.training. In your browser though, right? So In the browser, browser your yes. browser. Just kind yes. of paint the scene. Yes. Um, here, like Kim mentioned, you can browse the catalog to see any training that we offer, see what fits for you. Um, and then once you're ready to put that in your cart, it does ask you to create an account, but that's just to help us help you find what you were interested in. I know when you're on, you know, a regular shopping site and you've got those cute shoes and you put it in the cart, well, if they don't have your information, they can't find the cart for you. So that's why we ask you to create um, an account so that we can help you keep your cart. Um, but yes, this will give you anything that you need to know about the courses, any upcoming trainings that we offer, fm.training. Yep. If you re recall nothing else, fm.training. Yes. And then when you do find the training that you would like, um, you know, we've talked about if you're filling in just a gap of in your knowledge, then this first special saving code that you'll enter at checkout is going to be what you want to make note of right now. Your goals with an S, five zero. It will save you $50 off any one of those core competency courses. And it is any one of those, right? Even the four that are covered by the FMP, if you just want to do that leadership and strategy that Gail and I talked about, um, that will take $50 off or the Essentials of FM workshop. So that would be off of the full 
uh, Essentials of FM. If you are wanting to really commit and say, okay, uh, this year I'm going to get an IFMA credential, the FMP bundle, the SFP program, or core competency course bundle, that would be those seven, especially for those of you considering going after your CFM and just wanting to make sure that you have a good knowledge base in those other seven competency areas, your goals with the S again, 100, and that will save you $100. It can be off the member or non-member non -member pricing. As the, the disclaimer says there, you do not have to be an IFMA member to use these discounts. You also don't have to be a, you, an IFMA member to become an IFMA credentialed person. I will say though, the savings far outweigh the cost of a membership because we do want you to also become an IFMA member, understand all of the great resources that our members have access to, like the Knowledge Library, and to be able to use those resources and the networking, like on the Engage platform, mm -hmm. to have just somebody almost in the same office with you. Um, Gail, I know I've talked to a number of people and they're the only FM in their building or for their company, and they feel like they're on an island and nobody else really understands what it is that they're trying to accomplish, IFMA can help connect you to that community so that you have the support, just as if you were working with a very large team, um, they would be there to help support you. So, Gail, anything to add to, to what we've been talking about? Not really. I mean, this pretty much covers everything that we offer, that we do, um, no. Okay, okay. Um, so let's let's take a couple of moments and give people a chance if they want to put any questions in the chat. Um, today, the information is more about how do you learn and the fact that IFMA has different options for you for learning. Uh, yes, everything, the baseline is online available 24 seven. There's content you read, there are questions that you answer in order to demonstrate knowledge and mastery of that information. But the way that you process that information, everybody is different. So just as a quick reminder, Gail, what are some of those options? You can do it online, you can do it with a virtual instructor, or you can do it in a classroom with an instructor. Yeah, I almost feel like that's like a Dr. Seuss thing mm -hmm. <laughs> in a classroom, in a Zoom chat, <laughs> on camera, off camera, um, you know, at midnight or at 6 a.m. Whenever you how do you learn? Carpets <laughs> of time. Yeah, how do you learn? <laughs> in a tree, <laughs> you know, just yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and Alfie, how do you learn? I think they, they learn by osmosis. They hear what I have to say. So they're probably really good facility managers, but they're just, they're pretty, pretty lazy. I must mm -hmm. say <laughs> my little dogs, my coworkers. Uh, let's see. Do you see any questions? I think we must've just done a great job sharing the different learning formats. I agree. Okay. Oh, a great question corporate or group training? Yes. So a lot of what we've been talking about is assuming you're an individual and you are getting the training for yourself. Now at the point of payment, is that with a, a P card? Is that um, something P that, that you're going to be reimbursed for? Is it out of your own pocket? I mean, we don't know that. However, definitely leverage. If there are more people in your organization than just you that could benefit from training from any one of those options of training, we can offer you corporate or group pricing, and we'd be happy to talk with you about that. I think another question is, do we, um, is IFMA able to offer GSA priced training? And the answer is yes. IFMA is on the GSA schedule. There's our contract number. And this means that uh, it really can help if you're, if you work for the federal government, this can cut down on the amount of time that it takes for you to get approval for the training. So we're happy to help you with any of those items. Just reach out to us. There's a whole team here at IFMA that is here to help support you. 
And we are so glad to answer questions and we are so glad to, to help you with your training needs. Exactly. So corporate connections at ifma.org. Um, if you are on one of the, well, obviously, if you're watching this, this webinar, you are on one of the platforms, whether it's YouTube or LinkedIn, you can search and see what other topics we've talked about. And Gail, if you can go ahead and yep. take it from here. Yep. Um, and then that way, if you have any questions, like she said, you can look at all the other topics and see if maybe they cover the content that you're looking for. And if they don't, please feel free to reach out to us because like Kim said, we do have a team here that is ready to help answer those questions. Um, if your employer is on the fence about providing training, reach out to us. Um, we are able to provide a presentation if that's the route they need. Uh, we're able to just talk about the training that's offered to see if it makes sense for, for you and your team. Um, and again, maybe your employer doesn't cover the cost up front. You have to complete it and then they reimburse you. That's an option also. Exactly. And I don't know if you recall, but the um, in-person classroom options, and I believe there might even be some uh, virtual options, colleges and universities offer IFMAS courses. So if it's easier for you to get approval, if you take something through a college or a university, that would be an option as well. So we'd be happy to help brainstorm with you different ways that you'd be able to achieve your training. And again, you can have this in bite-sized pieces. You could do one competency at a time and really approach it in the way that makes the most sense for you. So uh, we are pretty much at the end. I know that we're, we're running at a, a pretty decent amount of time. So we want to let you get back to your day. Please, if you will, like the content that you've been watching. Check out our other uh, professional development webinars. Check out other things about IFMA. We have a lot of great content that we put out, not just professional development credentials and training, but a lot of other great resources at IFMA.org. Thank you so much for joining us. Gail, it's been a pleasure. And we hope to see you join us next month in our next webinar. Thank you. Thank you.